As you turn in the Bible to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7, if you turn into 2 Samuel chapter 7, if there is one today to has yet to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day that the Lord has purposed to save you. You are not here by accident. You are here by divine appointment. For God declares that because of sin, man is separated from God, but that God has made the way of reconciliation to himself through his only begotten Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said of himself, He is the way, the truth, the life. No man coming to the Father but by Jesus Christ. So here it is today. God speaking to you. He says, I want to save you. Well, here's what you have to do. You have to believe what the word of God has declared, that Jesus Christ is God's way of salvation. You have to acknowledge that you are a sinner and simply say, Lord, save me. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believing that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Your eternity is then secure in that place that the male party just sang about heaven. But your earthly existence is also secure. Because then the Lord gives us of his Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to help us along this life journey until he shall call us home. If you're here today though and you just don't have to get around to calling on the name of Jesus, the word of God requires that you be warned leave this world and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You then leave this world to enter into eternity to stand before God and be judged of your sin. You will be found guilty and the verdict of guilt then results in a sentence of eternal separation from God. A place of anguish. A lake of fire that will never be quenched. But heaven can be yours today. It is your decision. At the conclusion of the word of God being preached, we'll give you the opportunity to come in and you're led of the Holy Spirit, declaring yourself a candidate for baptism. Meaning that you have already received Jesus in your heart. And that means you identify with those who are his by being buried in the water, buried in Christ, and being raised of you in Christ. We also give an opportunity that if you're saved but not yet planted in a church home, if you're led of the Lord to then unite with this fellowship of believers, we will give you the opportunity to do so by letter or Christian experience. But we pray that someone will come unto Jesus while there is yet time and let the church say amen. amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we enter into your holy presence and we do so reverently and humbly. Acknowledging that you are God, Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One Lord manifest as the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Self-existent, infinite, eternal, and sovereign. We thank you, Lord, for all of who you are. We confess and repent of our sin and ask that you will forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That, Lord, you may speak to us in this moment in time. And that we will have an ear to hear and a heart to then obey your word. We thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we love you. It is in your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. 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 God has a purpose. God has a plan. And God takes us through a process. And yet, as we go through the process, there are promises that God has given us to assure us that we can make it to the end. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7, beginning with verse number 1, we'll find these words. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. And the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go, and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas 
I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent, and in a tabernacle, and all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why will ye not be in the house of Cedar? Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep, and from following the sheep, to be the ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused them to rest from all my enemies, also the Lord telleth me that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then, David, then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was a, yet a, a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say for unto thee? For thou, Lord, God, knowest thy servant. Let the church say amen. Amen. Uh, often, uh, folk come to church uh, when the word of God speaks to them and they are not ready to receive it. The weakness of flesh says that the preacher was preaching at me. Amen. the weakness of flesh does. So let me get everybody out there look and say, I'm preaching to myself. Because here's the word of God. Discerning a good idea from a God idea. Or discerning a good thought from a God thought. And I'm talking to me today. But I do believe I got some company in here, even though the company might be quiet today, but I just believe that I'm not the only one that has had to learn in life how to discern a good thought from a God thought. Here's the background. It was God himself who gave to the children of Israel the tabernacle. Everything in the tabernacle pointed to Messiah, Christ Jesus. Whether it was the bronze altar that was out in the courtyard, that bronze altar speaking of the sacrifice, the crucifixion sacrifice, 
of Jesus Christ. Whether it was the labor that contained the water that pointed to Christ washing us and cleansing us. Whether it was inside the holy place, the table of showbread, Jesus the bread of life. Whether it was the golden candlestick, Jesus the light of the world. Whether it was the altar of incense that stood right before the veil, Jesus our intercessor. Whether it was then that Ark of the Covenant, which then was the visible presence of the glory of God manifest among his people, demonstrating to us that God and God alone be glory, majesty, dominion, power, now and forever. Whether it was the type of, 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 of uh, color that was used in the tabernacle, the white symbolizing the purity, the red, the blood that was shed, the blue, the heaven existence. Whether it was the type of material, the gold, the deity of the Lord, silver pointing to the atonement, everything that went into the tabernacle was there because God said to Moses, here's how you build it and here's what it's going to do. It's going to lead you as you journey through this wilderness. And as long as you follow me, everything going to be all right. When the tabernacle came into existence and the tabernacle was portable because whenever God said move, they had to move. Well, over the course of time, the children of Israel, God blessed them to come out of Egypt and to actually go in and possess the promised land. Well, now the, the tabernacle did not have to move as frequently because they were in the land. There came a time when the children of Israel were hard-headed and disobedient. Sound familiar? The children of God were hard-headed and disobedient. And they decided on one occasion to take the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of the Lord, and take it down to the battlefield thinking that it was a good luck charm. Listen, no horseshoe, no rabbit foot gonna help you if you out of God's will. Y'all wake up in here today. They took it down to the battlefield thinking that, well, we got the ark of God, and so we are going to be saved. Well, they were defeated by their enemies. The enemies took the ark of God into their possession. But when God got through with the Philistines, they were more than happy to put that ark on a cart and send it back to where it belongs. Why? Because they got a holy belong in the house of God. So the Ark of the Covenant was back into the territory of Israel. And yet, the remainder of the tabernacle was not reunited with the Ark. When David became the king of Israel, he then looked, and as the scripture says, God had given him rest from all of his enemies. Praise the Holy Name. <laughs> But God can give you rest from all your enemies. David sat, and David had been able then to have built it for himself a house of cedar, a house of good love, good wood. David then had a thought in his heart. He said, well now, I got a nice house. Got a pretty good house myself. But the ark of God is sitting out there and it's under a tent. Now we ought to be able to do better than this. Yes, and so it entered into his heart, chapter number seven, that he wanted to build a house for the Lord. And then he told it to Nathan, the prophet, sort of like his preacher, pastor. Right. He went to his pastor and said, well, pastor, you know, I think it'll be a good thing yeah. that if I would just build a place yeah. that would be uh, indicative of the God that has brought us to where we are. Yeah. And if I can live in the kind of house that I'm living in, yeah. surely we can 
to build a house that will reflect the glory of the God who blessed us. I submit to you. That was a good thought. Yeah. It was a good thought that emanated out of a heart of love for God. Yeah. And then he told it to the preacher. Yes, sir. And the preacher said, according to the scripture here, verse 3, Nathan said, go, do all that's in thy heart, for the Lord is with me. Right. So it sounded too to the preacher like it was a good thought. Y'all yeah. yeah. walking with me? Yeah. Yeah. But then the Bible said, and it came to pass, not the next day, but that night. Yeah. Then God spoke to the preacher and told him, no, you need to go back. Yes, sir. And I got a word for my servant David. Yes, sir. So church, here's where we are. And here's where I often find myself. Yes, sir. It is critically important that all of what we do for God is motivated out of a heart of love. Amen. It's got to first be motivated because I love the Lord. Amen. And I want to give God my best. Yes. Do you see that? That David desired to give God his best. Yes. Secondly, then he didn't just go out and do it. He sought spiritual guidance. Right. Now walking with the church. Yes, but now he was a godly man, David, yes, and a godly preacher, prophet, Nathan, yes, who both looked at the thought yes, and said, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, then God stepped in. Yeah. 
is bigger than any building. God supersedes any dimension that man will put upon him. And so he asked David the question, if you're going to build me a house, baby, All right. what house can contain me? Yes, sir. And then, and now I'm going home. He said, David, you want to build me a house? But here really was at, at stake, David. I need to build your house. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Be ready. Yes, sir. Did y'all read it with me? Yes, sir. Y'all got to go back and read it again then when you get home. Yes, sir. God said, you want to build me a house, but the real issue is, I need to build your house. You and I need to invite the Lord yes, to build our house. Yes, when the Lord builds your house. Yes, now, both of you, many of you will be able to relate to the fact that whoever built the natural house that you currently live in, yes, the reality is they did it okay, but they didn't always do it right. Yes,
couldn't move very much. I saw him doing something. I was like, hey, why are you doing that like that? <laughs> and he did what you did. He laughed. <laughs> he said, sir, I, I've done this for a little while. <laughs> and when he was finished, it was right. That let me know that there was somebody that knew something a little more than I did. Yeah. Can I tell you yeah. this today? God knows a lot. I don't know. God knows a lot more than you and I do. And when God is building our house, I ask God to build this house Amen. so it'll be what he wants it to be Amen. so that he can always be welcome in this house that is called by his name. Amen. This ain't my house. Amen. This ain't your house. Amen. This is God's house. Amen. So one day you and I are going to be moved on. Amen. And yet the same God that brought our forefathers and who's bringing us right now. Yeah. He'll bring generations to come. Yeah. And God will be glorified yeah. in his house. Yeah. And when God builds your personal house, yeah. then he goes with you wherever you go. Yeah. And so God's house ought to be present everywhere. I mean, God's house ought to be present. When you go to work, somebody ought to know God's house. There's something in there. When you do whatever you do during your weekday, somebody ought to know. Yes. God has built this house. 